introduce helicopters on this. Um, what comes to mind, Tim? <laughs> Somebody has a very bad plan uh, on a pursuit if you're going to try to talk them out of uh, not chasing you. So it's going to not do a bit of good here. But, you know, it's also you have to take into effect, account what is going on in that driver's mind. And what do you think is going on in this driver's mind as we transition onto the 605 freeway now? Well, well the thing is, is that, you know, it's kind of hard to figure out exactly what is going on because, you know, it takes, it, you just don't understand what goes through a driver's mind when he thinks that he can get away from law enforcement and drive like this, putting other people in danger. And like they always keep in mind that it's alcohol impairment is there drug impairment or is there some type of psychotic episode going on in that car so mm -hmm. uh they have to stay flexible to, to what this driver is going to do and trying to figure out his state of mind at this point is just uh, down the line you're right now just trying to drive safely and keep the uh the motoring public in in said in safe to where you're not causing issues with the people on the roads and not provoking the driver into uh, doing something uh, silly but luckily right now it looks like he's staying at pretty low speeds and not making those rapid lane changes well along those lines tim we understand that police are running a break which means they are slowing traffic probably on that freeway behind this suspect so they can have cars not speed up and get in the way of this pursuit because if this car is going at 40 something miles per hour obviously if you're going normally down the freeway 60 miles per hour plus uh, you're going to whiz right past them. You don't want other motorists in the way here, unsuspecting motorists who come upon you. So if you run that brake, you stop that traffic right there, and police can deal with who we have seen now, bizarre behavior. Yeah, in addition to running a round robin behind them, holding the traffic back, they're also having units ahead block on ramps oh, to try to minimize the amount of cars on the freeway. It looks like he might be coming to a stop here, slowing down on the shoulder. And uh, and that gives you the opportunity to put out the spike strips and uh, intervention techniques. But it looks like it might be coming to stop on its own. Yeah, does he run, though? That's the big question. Do something right. here to try to box him in or to, to pit maneuver him or do something to make this thing in? Uh, right now, the only thing they can do is just wait to, for him to start you know, getting out of the car, because if you get in front of him, you don't know what's in that car. Mm -hmm. You don't want to put another off range in the line of fire, uh, things of that sort. So they're going to sit back and go in bam like this with the lights to get as much information from that car as they can, looking in there with those spotlights, talking to him on a PA. The observer in that helicopter right now is starting to come, the pilot is bringing him down to where he can use those cameras to look inside the the vehicle and try to pick up on any threat that might be in there. But you see the uh, driver's just hand gesturing, acting yeah. like, you know, what's going on here? Uh, you know, why are you chasing me? And so you have to deal with an irrational person at this point. Mm -hmm. And I always say that the most dangerous pursuit is when it comes to an end because you don't know what's going to happen. The driver is in total control right now of how this pursuit is going. Well, Tim, we watch this behavior here, and, and, and very, very bizarre behavior. Somebody who is a knows that you need to come out with your hands up and show that you have no weapon, toss the keys out of the car, all those kinds of things. This driver, not complying, could start that car up at any moment and take off again. We don't know if there's a weapon on the car. Why this person is behaving like this, but who thinks that, okay, showing his hands, that, that's helpful. That's helpful, but needs to get out of the car and comply. Clearly, it looks like he's but, having some sort of uh, episode okay, here, yeah. and now he's going to drive yeah. <laughs> once again. So at, at some point, did uh, police just say, we've had enough of this, let's... And they've shut down the freeway behind him in both directions. Is, is there a thought to, to pit maneuver him or, or make this car not work anymore and, and bring this thing to an end? Well, they have a lot of things in their toolkits, and they're you know, going through the scenarios of how they're going to handle it. Now it's getting off the freeway, but in a situation like this, this gives them time to get ahead and be ready for a spike strip, and then yeah, you're right. Once it gets to those speeds, who are right through the intersection there and right back up, you know, doing a ramping maneuver here where he goes through. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're planning on to do something here as far as a pit maneuver or a, a spike strip or something of that sort. But... Then again, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes with the dispatchers and the uh, communication center, who's talking. Maybe they're on the line with it. 
phone. You never know, or they're on the line with a relative who are telling them information about this person. So it's just a matter of uh, getting all the intel you can on this driver to figure out what's the next best move. So they'll go through everything they can to try and uh, end this thing peacefully without doing a lot of damage, such as with a pit have a tendency of uh, going out of control, possibly hitting another vehicle or getting up on the uh, sidewalk. But right now it's right on the side of the freeway here working its way along. And so they have to be aware of their surroundings before they try this type of uh, maneuver here. So it is now past 1030 on a Friday night. Usually this is when we air our political show, The Issue, worked very hard on and was excited to show you right now. But instead we've got this. If you want to watch that, you can stream that right now at YouTube. Alex Michelson. It is up there if you want to watch that. We will join that in progress when this thing is over. Hopefully it ends soon. Uh, but in the meantime, Fox 11, we continue to follow uh, this pursuit. A driver who is wanted uh, for DUI. We don't know his mental state. He looks agitated. We don't know if he's armed. We don't know the circumstances. Pursuit. Uh, he has uh, stopped several times on haunted police uh, and uh, he continues uh, to move now on side streets in the San Gabriel Valley Christine you know people say hey slow speeds why not do a pit maneuver right now and Tim Lynn you can weigh in but it's officer safety we don't know what's going on with this driver we've already seen that bizarre behavior and we don't know if there's a weapon in the car or how he'll react Right, being on this side of the pursuit, you know, having been in, in police work and flown police helicopters and also driven in pursuits, you have a lot more information on that end of the pursuit with the plans of the police. As a uh, helicopter pilot and a former news pilot, we're getting just bits and pieces of the information. We have to kind of uh, figure out what's going on just by that little bit of radio traffic that we get. So right now, those officers on the ground have a lot more information. They could be on the phone with the driver, you know, on speakerphone where he's just yelling into the uh, the speaker and, and talking to the dispatch. Or, you know, the watch commanders made contact. They're getting information like that. But luckily, we have a slow process. It is keeping the hazards down. And time then shifts back to the officers to where the time is on their side to where they don't have to react quickly as if he was going 80, 90 miles an hour on the freeway you know, or through these surface streets where they needed to get on him in a hurry. But uh, a decision is going to be made here pretty soon by a CHP to bring this to an end, either, as I said earlier, by a spike strip or by a pit maneuver. He is in, they're in the speed limit to where a pit maneuver could be used, but uh, you know, right now it's up to them to make that decision to do it. So uh, they want to make sure they have all the information possible for this. So when the uh, end result is the person taken into custody, uh, they know exactly when the perfect time is to do it. Uh, yeah, and um, I mean, it's clear that he's communicating with them. We don't know, they obviously know what he's saying to them. Um, at one point he put his hands out. Uh, he clearly looked very agitated, uh, screaming back and forth. Um, or threatening to harm them, um, and how that may be informing their decision uh, on in terms of how to proceed. But it seems like they are really going out of their way not to be aggressive in their pursuit on this. At speeds like this, if they wanted to pit maneuver him, they certainly could. Uh, at speeds like this, or this sort of situation, if they wanted to box him in, uh, and put cars on, uh, they could as well. Uh, but they are, for whatever reason, choosing not to do that. Well, they may have information that, you know, he is just having a, a mental episode from a family member, and they yep. don't want to antagonize this person. But then again, it takes out the, if they're assured that there's no threat of, uh, of harm coming from that vehicle, like the, with a weapon towards the officers, or as you said, Alex, 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 that the uh, suspect may try to hurt himself 
Yeah, you don't want to cause that to happen either. So there's a lot of stuff they have to put into play here to make sure this thing comes in safely. But right now it looks like they're just uh, working with time and letting this thing work itself out because right now he's and not really putting a lot of people in danger. It happened many times with pursuits that they just let it run its course. Uh, we don't have pedestrians necessarily of concern right now at this hour. Not seeing a lot of cars on any of the paths that this car has taken. So really, there aren't a lot of people in harm's way. The speeds aren't excessive. So maybe you're right. Maybe they're going to let it just run itself out. Yeah, and luckily with him on the surface streets like this, and sure to where he's staying in the same area, they may be able to get those spike strips out in front of him. But uh, they uh, they have a plan. They, they know the area. And once they get into an area where they can uh, kind of funnel it down toward makes it easy, uh, that's probably where it's going to happen right now. Just the, the, the posture I'm seeing from the CHP is they're just waiting and waiting for the opportunity and also waiting for more information to be able to uh, take this thing, to bring this thing to a stop because they're, they're not being overly aggressive at all. And, I mean, to their point, time is on their side, right? I mean, they they're got plenty of officers. If they got to move somebody else in, they will. I mean, if... if Really being threatened, and it really doesn't seem to be as this guy sort of slowly moves around the side streets that seem to be empty and screams at the officers. They can just keep this going as long as they need to be. Ultimately, the officers are concerned with uh, getting out of this safe. Um, and if nobody else is really being threatened, I guess what's the point of unnecessarily provoking somebody? Exactly. And you also have to keep in mind and boil this down to its very base. This is nothing more than a property crime that they have right now. I mean, it's it's a vehicle that he's driving that, that possibly doesn't belong to him. They have no other information of another crime that we've heard of. So, you know, it, it boils what how far are you gonna go on a simple property crime that the insurance company will take care of this car if they, if they just back off, let it go and let him park someplace and walk away from it. I mean, it's it's all up to them. And we've seen that over and over again. There were the PDs and, and CHP actually the other day for the first time in my memory, uh, let a pursuit go and just uh, stop chasing it completely. But right now getting back on the freeway, so this may change the dynamic of this pursuit that he starts picking up speed and turning between traffic and, and start putting other people in harm's way. Yeah, back, like you said, on the freeway, 605 northbound, yet again. Uh, we talked about, Tim, sometimes driving to an area that feels comfortable to them, familiar to them, even returning to their home or where their friends are, a neighborhood that is very familiar to them, where they know the streets as well. Hard to predict on this one. We've been in Monterey Park. We've been in West Covina. We've been on the 605 freeway, the 10 freeway, now 605 again. Uh, do you get any kind of feel for the, what this driver's doing here? No, not really. He just seems to work uh, off the freeway, not getting back on. And so we'll just see where if he starts heading back to the, the start point of this pursuit. And you're right. They'll areas that they're familiar with because they'll try to get to an area where they have a friendly house to where they can run, go over a few fences, and then in the back door of a house before they can be seen. And once you're inside of a house, it's very difficult to locate them. So that's when the, you have uh, like a suspect is wanted for some type of crime who gets back into a neighborhood where he's from and it has a lot of people there that he's able to hide in a house just by you know coming over a couple fences. So uh, you have that also too. You get people you know to get out to where they have no idea what the freeway is doing. They have no idea what the streets are doing. And they, you know, they're driving just blindly at this point. So they'll try to get back to a familiar area that they're used to the streets to where they can just keep it going and not come down a cul-de-sac. And that's usually how these things do come to an end where a suspect makes the wrong turn down a cul-de-sac and then they're blocked in. But mm. uh, right now he's just you know, working his way down, getting off now here at Huntington Drive. And so it's just, you know, uh, a matter of time. But as slow as he's driving, there is no reason for the officers to really push this any harder so right now he's not putting anybody in danger it's just a matter of a wait and see and like you said time is on the officers so we continue to watch this uh, pursuit um, a reminder for those that were tuning in for the issue is at this time for the first time in six years we've pre
So you can watch that right now at youtube.com slash Alex Michelson, Tulsi Gabbard, Jane Fonda, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Gavin Newsom, Josh Friday, our guests this week. And here on TV, we continue to follow this pursuit uh, in the San Gabriel Valley, this driver uh, now moving into uh, this alleyway, uh, this person suspected of driving under the influence uh, and uh, driving this person accused and uh, frustrated with the officers behind. Uh, they have stopped a few different times to... Oh, uh, and here we go. Maybe uh, you're... It looked like it for a second, though, didn't it, Tim? Yeah, it did. It did, but it looks like he's going to have a way out. So they, they do that. They make that mistake, and they get down in these little side streets, and they start weaving their way around, and especially getting into alleys to where they'll come to an end. Uh, so, you know, to where they're not going to get away. But it looks like he's just going to cruise this neighborhood here and see what we got here. Got a gate. And, uh, hopefully if this is the end of the road for him most residential neighborhood we've seen this driver in ever since we picked up this pursuit uh this to go okay back out to a main street here so here we go he's going to yeah. get back on a main street and continue on this pursuit uh too bad that tells you that he knows that area he knew that little back road you i think mean he that did? was a very small driveway he just went down well and you know it's funny you mentioned that because i saw some people walking around in their backyard as well uh, probably innocent people, probably heard the helicopter overhead, checking things out. But uh, every now and then there is somebody who comes out who actually knows the driver. They have some kind of connection. Maybe somebody made a phone call or in their neighborhood they're watching on TV. And, you know, there goes the person I know in a pursuit. They're coming by the house right now. Uh, but, yeah, that looked pretty random. But that was a very narrow street. Yes, yes. And then, that does happen quite pursuits to get back into the neighborhoods to where they've been watching it or they've been communicating as you said and they'll get out in the middle of the street and try to convince the guy to stop to get out of the car and yes i've seen many times moms standing out on the yellow line trying to get their kid to get out of the car mm -hmm. and then they just end up taking off but uh yeah it you know the erratic manner that he was waving his hands and talking and, and doing things inside the car phone with somebody uh that's just somebody ranting on their own so consideration so but this thing here is going to get it, it i'm just feeling now they're going to get to a point to where they're going to say okay enough's enough and go up and either and at this point probably do a pit maneuver and hopefully it's not under the freeway like we've had them do before but uh yeah they'll they'll just finally make a call saying okay enough's enough we're just going to go ahead and stop it. unless they have information that you know, he's having a mental episode and that he's just trying to get back home and then they'll let him drive right back home. Okay. That's the best ending to something like this. Huh. So, so how does that work? So he, he goes home, pulls up in the driveway and then they just, they just, no. he gets out of the car and he <laughs> no. gets out of the car. I mean, what is that? He gets out of the car and he you, helps him. You want to separate, sorry. Go ahead. You want to separate him from the car. If he drives up in his driveway, and then that's good. He's going to get out of the car. And then you have the the taser. You have less lethal rounds. You have all kinds of things at that point that you can bring into play because you've got him out of the most dangerous weapon he has at this point is that car. So if he pulled up in his driveway, shoot one day that I was with you folks on air on a motorcycle, and the guy drove right up his driveway and into a garage. But unfortunately, LAPD was for him and uh, pulled him right out of the garage. So it's, if, they, if they know where he's going to go or they're, they're working, they just wants to go home, they'll stage officers at the house. So if he does show up there, but the driveway, they, you know, just get to the front door and they have tools and methods that they can use to uh, stop. But, uh, the thing is, then you're dealing with family members that might be out there yeah, and not be cooperative. But like I said, you've, you've gotten rid of it. It looks like he's going into a parking structure well we, we should note we're in the area of the city of hope cancer center not sure if this is one of their lots or locations or be the dead end you're talking about yeah could be it looks like he pulled into the, the big coming around the corner here and you know it's if this you know almost looks like a the entrance to the hospital where you park mm -hmm. in the structure and go through and now he's in the the turnaround but i can see them making a right turn. it looked like they may have went into the parking structure itself hmm well, we've seen suspects be able to flee in parking structures like at a mall or some kind of office building. 
this one, uh, I almost think this could be like that dead end you're talking about right here in the parking yeah. structure. And this one here, they can block the exits. They'll, they'll get yeah. units into the area if they can that are following and start blocking exits and keep them in that parking structure. And, and this time of night, it's not what we, we've seen before where they've raced in there really quick. Huh? They just came right back out. Oh, no. So they're just letting them In my mind now, nothing else going on here. They, they have an idea of what they're chasing and what they're following. Huh. And they're just roll because there was perfect timing in that inside that or parking structure forced him into a, an area where he couldn't have gotten out because you have parking burns, you have poles, you have, you know, uh, very thin exits coming out of there. So they could have very easily blocked him into that parking structure, but they chose not to. There's something else going on here just from my prior experience in law enforcement and the way they're acting. There's more going on here that meets the eye. So they're just going to let him follow. Yeah. Could be like we've kind of alluded to in conversation here that to, like you said, a family member. They have a, an exact idea of who this person is and what the problem is and not fearing that it's a non, it's a, it's a violent person necessarily. But as you mentioned, perhaps having some kind of breakdown here that they want to work with in a different manner than, than being aggressive. Right. And the, and the thing is, is what the, the officers are trying to do on a pursuit like this is bring it to an end as quickly as possible. If it's a dangerous pursuit, the person's driving a high rate of speed. Uh, you want to get it stopped as quickly as possible so he doesn't end up T-boning somebody in the middle of an intersection. But a situation like this, the slow speeds, the, the driving that he is, he is presenting right now is not putting that uh, out to the other drivers. I mean, it's not causing that issue to where you're going to ram somebody going to a red light, staying in a residential area right now. But even when he came up to a red light, he would stop. And then signal as he makes his turn. I mean, it's, it always cracks me up when they're using their skills and they're doing all that during pursuit because it, it's, it's just motor, it's just motor skills and you know, mental type things that cause you to do that without even thinking about it. But right now, yeah, they're just, I can just tell that it looks like they're just going to go ahead and follow him until he decides to pull over and stop or he's trying to get to. I mean, uh, there's got to be more information right now because normally CHP is a little more aggressive than this and, and will bring these things to an end rather than just following and following uh, until, it, you know, if he just decides to stop and get out. I mean, they've had multiple uh, opportunities yeah. to pit him. They have right multiple there. opportunities. Yeah, Easy opportunity down. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's I mean, got to have a little movement, to, yeah. little movement to pit. But. Hmm. This is that I, I would love to hear the follow-up tomorrow if we don't see an end to this tonight by the end of our shift. I'm very curious to know what happened here, what's going on, who is a suspect, and why these tactics. I'd love to hear from CHP as to how they decided what to do on this one. I've heard that over and over and over again while working for the media and also now after being with the media and out. People ask me, go, why doesn't the media mm -hmm. ever follow up to tell us uh -huh. what happened when this thing goes away at alleged with? What was the real problem? Because it's it's a it's a it's interested in, and you invest time in it, and the ending, you know, you don't see what happened at the end, and uh, and also too on something like this, you know, why did they follow so long? What was this guy going through? What was happening? And you know, it, it gives the uh, insight to what a police officer deals with. They do everything they can to end it safely and also deal with what's going on in that car. So right now we're just going round in circles here through these residential streets. It's just a matter of time uh, before he just pulls over. That's probably what's going to happen. He's going to get where he thinks he's going or who he wants to be and then pull over, and then you're going to have the uh, situation at the end. So, yeah, a, a follow-up would be a, a good segment, you know, following up on the last four pursuits we handled on a Friday night. It, it, it would. Um... Unfortunately, mm -hmm. our collective uh, attention spans are short, and tomorrow there'll be another <laughs> pursuit. <laughs> so then people will be, be, be uh, focused and want to see yeah. uh, how that one ends. Um, uh, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah, if you don't have an end to it. I mean, if you don't have, like on this one here, if we come to the end of the show, I mean, I'd like to know what happened to here at the yeah. end. And, you know, I can make find out, but huh. it's just a matter of where it ends, you know, and who I know, and a lot of, you know, you, most people don't have that, that opportunity, so, right. but yeah, it's uh, also, too, it's also show what police officers do, 
into things like this, why they did what they did during the pursuit, because you have all the armchair quarterbacks out there, you know, demanding this, demanding that. Why aren't they doing what you're doing that? There's guys in those black and whites that have a lot more training and a lot more information than we do sitting here watching it from uh, high above. What I am noticing is this suspect has been staying in the San Gabriel Valley area for a little while here now, and we've noticed that the suspect has been on freeways, off freeways, twice now in San Gabriel Valley. So this is an area that is familiar to this suspect, that they might know uh, some of these streets, maybe not all of them, but some of them, because they haven't gotten back on freeways and taken off, say, towards Santa Monica or County. They're back here in this similar area. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And it looks like he is in no hurry to get away from the officers, so he's not feeling threatened by them. And it's just a matter of cruising along. Like I said earlier, he could be on the phone with a family member right now, uh, you know, giving his side of the story and, of course, not listening to the response and just continuing along. So, yeah, who knows what's going on in that car right now? Yes, we do not know what's going on in that car right now, but we will continue to follow it. Uh uh, as we are here this Friday night watching this pursuit, uh, a slow speed pursuit uh, in the San Gabriel Valley area. We're now at Central Avenue and DeCannon Avenue uh, if you live in the neighborhood. Not much of a threat right now uh, to public safety. That's the good news. Um, uh, but there, you know, is we're all interested to see how this thing ends and. Uh, a peaceful manner relatively soon um, for everybody involved, the, the, the driver and, and the officers as well, um, who are being especially cautious in staying off of uh, uh, taking any aggressive uh, actions to end this thing quickly and sort of letting it play out uh, on this Friday night. So I believe we passed Duarte High School uh, watching this pursuit just a short time ago. Uh, look at the speeds here, 15 miles per hour. Uh, very strange, uh, not a high-speed pursuit by any means at this point in time. Uh, freeway had much... Now, does a suspect get out of the car here? Uh, remember, we had that erratic behavior where the suspect had the windows rolled down slightly, was gesturing uh, erratically at officers. This was twice now. And this is an opportunity right now for the suspect to just get out of the car and end this. I'm not so sure I see that happening. Who knows? Well, the Skyfox slides out just a little bit more. We might see that he's sitting on a red light. So I'm kind of waiting for that to come into view to where we can see what the phase of the light is. He's sitting at a red light at this mm -hmm. point. But, you know, and we've, we've seen that. And then, you there know, we go. So gesturing. Then continue through. Yeah, gesturing yeah. again. Looks very agitated, looks uh, acting nationally. This is somebody who was wanted for driving under the influence. We influence of what? Uh, we don't know also what uh, these officers may know about his mental state, uh, if he is having some sort of mental breakdown, uh, if he is threatening self-harm or harm them. Um, but the way that he is gesturing and the sort of passion in his uh, retorts to the um, leads one to believe that uh, he is not well right now. And that clearly seems to be a factor in uh, the officers going out of their way to give this person space and time to bring this thing uh, to an end on his terms and frankly not on their terms. Uh, it looks like a waited out situation um, to try to give this person some space uh, to end this thing. So we're now moving, we're moving into um, what parking looks lot. to be maybe a parking lot of possibly an apartment complex or businesses here. Hard to tell. Looks like maybe some businesses. Uh, and. Um, you know, where is he going to go next? He's been circling this neighborhood for a while, so you wonder about his familiarity with this neighborhood. Is this his hometown? Will he be uh, home, as Tim Lynn uh, suggested? Uh, we're now near a Target. Uh, you see uh, officers seem to block off that one alleyway. Um, and uh, 
uh, he continues to move as we now approach. Was, yeah, go ahead, Tim. No, I said that was a local officer there that was in the area trying to stay out of the way, but uh, you know, sitting behind that target waiting for it to go by. But yeah, it, yeah, it's just a matter here. There, and the one thing I'm really happy about is that all that anger and all that agitation is not translating into the accelerator pedal, and he is driving at that at that. Uh, mindset. So it looks like he went through the parking lot to the main streets. But yeah, you have uh, the local PDs are all in the area, staying out of the way, and waiting for this thing to come to an end to help support the CHP. But as we know from uh, prior pursuits, once CHP takes over, pursuit, enforcement uh, units will stay out of the pursuit, and CHP is the, the pursuit because they uh, they will not combine with another agency. It's just one of their policies that they use. But yeah, uh, right here, again, like I said, going back to my prior statement, it's just looking at the way they're operating here. They have some information that this person is not stable, you know, un unlike some of our other drivers that we have out there who are just trying to get away because they committed a crime. This is a person who's not stable, either by drugs, alcohol, or, or mental state, mm -hmm. and they're going to give him time to uh, to uh, work this out on his own. And in the meantime, he is not putting anybody in harm. But if he starts driving in an erratic manner, then they will go to a more aggressive uh, uh, pursuit to where the, the pit maneuver will probably happen because he's in the Tim. perfect area right here. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're yeah. going to hand this off to Marla Tea <clears throat> soon for Good Night LA as we watch this pursuit here. This suspect is near freeways and clearly choosing to stay on surface streets. Alex? Uh, so, tonight, the issue is pursuits, uh, which is uh, what we uh, do in Southern California, and frankly, the thing people care about the most. So, again, if you want to watch The Issue Is with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jane Fonda, Tulsi Gabbard, Josh Friday, Gavin Newsom, check that out at youtube.com slash Alex Michelson or The Issue Is podcast. Uh, in the meantime, uh, our coverage uh, with our colleague Marla Tejas and her time slot of Goodnight L.A., uh, and ends uh, with the end of this pursuit. Hopefully, it's going to come to an end soon. Marla, take it away. Alex and Christine, thank you so much. She is here for the start of Goodnight L.A. Of course, we will stick with the slow-speed pursuit of a possible DUI suspect. This is in the upper San Gabriel Valley. This is where this pursuit has been sort of going round and round for at least the last... 20 minutes on surface streets. Oh, you see the spike strips being thrown out right now by a CHP officer, but that driver there just saw that and then decided to make a right turn. This is South Mountain Avenue in Lynn. You saw that play out just as I did. Right, yeah, the officer uh, went out in front of the vehicle and tried to deploy that spike strip out in front, but unfortunately it didn't extend far enough to where the driver was uh, able to make that right turn and move around it. And then you notice the driver picked up his speed a little bit more than what we've been seeing over the last half hour, uh, but luckily not into an excessive rate of speed because of his agitated state. I'm sure his driving abilities are impaired as well. As they said, a possible DUI suspect, but we don't know if it's drugs, alcohol, or, or a mental impairment that he's dealing with here that's causing him to exhibit those types of driving habits. But right now, as we've been following this, in very slow speeds through uh, residential areas here in the upper San Gabriel area and working through these residential parking lots, but not really doing anything exceedingly fast. The officers have gone into a more of a track, a close tracking mode to where they're just waiting for that suspect to either give up or find, get to his destination and, and pull over. All right, to catch our viewers up to speed, if you are just joining us, this all started in the uh, Monterey Park area. Now we are in the upper San Gabriel Valley area where it has been for the last several minutes. Alex and Christine picked this up about 1025, so it's been just over 30 minutes at this point that we've been following this. Uh, as Tim Lynn has communicated and as it's now being demonstrated for you, it's been slow speeds for most of the time. We've seen, oh, look, look, look at this innocent driver trying to sort of help out authorities perhaps that's never a good idea to intervene just fyi uh, don't try to be a hero because you could end up becoming a victim in a situation regardless of the slow speeds uh, but what i was saying tim is we've seen a lot of cat and mouse a lot of slowing down a lot of the driver it's a male 
taunting the officers. And at one point, Skyfox got a really close-up shot, windows down, and it only looked like, A, that this uh, driver was, the suspect was praying at one point, like, dear God, you know, get me out of this. And then at one point turned around and seemed to have said, you know what, what did I do? And it, almost as if to say, I haven't done anything and just running from authorities. Obviously, they have reason to believe this suspect is uh, under the influence of something. Uh, you've really touched on the fact that they must know something because they haven't brought this to an end because it's gone into a parking structure. There's been many moments where it seems from a spectator standpoint that you could easily bring this to an end, but they have chosen not to. So it's been some strategy, Tim. Yes, and uh, that's what tells me that there's more going on in that car and they have that information that we do than we do in the media. So uh, there, as we spoke earlier, there could also be a worry if this driver may harm himself if you trap him in, and so they're trying their best not to have that happen. But if he starts driving in an erratic manner and putting other people at risk, they will do. They will become more aggressive and get it to stop. But right now, uh, they've pulled into that times on their side mode to where there's no reason to uh, be aggressive. Driver, there's no reason to go after him as hard as they can now going into a, a parking lot hopefully there's no outlet on this and this may be to an end here it looks like we have fences in the back here see what happens when he gets to the back yeah it may not yeah, have an outlet around. is it going around the sea it's yeah. only a matter of time till we're really going to see oh yeah there yeah, is an just, outlet gives me he knows the area i yeah. mean to use that driveway and be able to know to get he can get out the back side he may be circling where he lives and just trying to uh, build uh, the thought or the courage or whatever to pull over and get out of his car and try to go into his house. And we talked about earlier that uh, if you know he's trying to get home, let him go home and pull into the driveway. You've taken the most dangerous weapon out of his hand, that vehicle, and then you deal with him when he gets out of the car before he can get into the house. So at that point, they can use other tools in their tool bag to uh, take him into custody. But, uh, yeah, they're they're definitely giving him the uh, the run to where he can just go on his and uh you know, just kind of cruise through. He's not blasting through intersections on red lights. He's even stopping at red lights. And one other thing you touched on, Marla, is you saw that person in the Jeep try to pull in front of mm -hmm. him because they've probably been watching it or listening to it somehow or mm -hmm. streaming it. I, it has happened, and a big rig driver found this out the hard way. The heat blocked in a pursuit. He was hit by the, the, the suspect. The insurance company saw that and denied the claim on the oh. car because it's an intentional act. It's yeah. not an accident, and they will not cover the damage on your car. Also, you're putting yourself in liability. Uh, if you hurt the person in the car, now you become civilly liable. So it is just nothing worth it. Let the police do their job. That's what they get paid to do. That's what they're trained to do. And as you want to stay out of the way. You don't Stop want to become it. part of the problem and end up. So it looks like we're stopped here. Yeah. I like to know what to say. Huh. Maybe at a red light. But, well, I uh, mean, at this you know, point, what's a red light? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm saying he's stopping at a red light. That's why he's stopping. He's right. not stopping to talk the cars, talk right. the officers, because we've been watching that. But uh, I'm hoping that he just gets frustrated enough to get out Going of the car. Going in another, another uh, parking lot. This is, it looks like an apartment <laughs> complex or maybe industrial. Yep. It's hard to really get a sense of it. Yeah, more industrial, perhaps. Um, businesses, perhaps. We'll business park. Uh, back on the street here. This is in Duarte by the way, Evergreen Street and Highland Avenue. Uh, you make a great point, though, that if you do get involved and you try to be the hero, that and if your insurance company gets a hold of that, they're, they're, you're, you're out of luck. So that's never a good right. idea. I do remember that specific pursuit. We were covering that, and that was a, a wild one. This isn't necessarily wild, and Alex made the point that this isn't really a danger to the public right now. There's really no one out there on the streets, thank goodness. A business center drive uh, so that was a business park um, but you know nonetheless if someone is under the influence you should not be behind the wheel um, uh, my question though is given this less aggressive strategy Tim the speeds are so low why in the world are they not pitting you know it's like I said the, the, the pit I don't uh, just from their their mannerisms and, and their mode operating now they have some information on this this driver 
that is telling him that the, the pitting is pit is not necessary at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're just hoping for the point of him going back to wherever he wants to get. Now, at the slow speed like this, it's a little more difficult at a slow speed to pay. Uh, he needs to get up into that the range that makes it go around. And then now, you know, is there a information that he'll do self-harm? Mm-hmm. Uh, if you pit him, you pin him in, and now you have a, a suicidal suspect there hurting himself. Now what do you do? Now you have to really jump in there. And if he has a firearm, now you're putting yourself in harm's way. You're just making a problem that you didn't need to make. And so, like I said, they're working with a lot of information that we have. And, and their their uh, uh, operations right now is telling me that there's something that they know that we don't is why. Because like I said, CHP is usually pretty aggressive at uh, ending these pursuits, but it seems to be they've taken the attack of just follow and see what happens and see if he stops. But like I said, if he starts driving aggressively and things of that sort, they will go back to a, the more aggressive mode and pit him. But I think what they're hoping for, and what I for is that primary unit, is that he's going to box himself in going down a little tiny alley like hopefully it, there's no ending this looks now like we're, ahead we're on sort of in the middle of a wash here this is interesting yeah, he's gone down a couple of these yeah i mean to where he pops out onto a street where he has local knowledge of these mm-hmm. areas that where you know unless you know, unless you've been through there a bunch you don't know that goes right through. but this is back out into a residential area so uh, at this situation, I mean, there's a reason why they're just following him like this. And I said they have the more more information than we do. The most aggressive driving that we've seen uh, of late was basically at the top of Goodnight LA at the top of the <laughs> 11 o'clock hour was when the officer threw out the spike. And then he yeah. picked up the speed just a little bit, maybe into the 50 mile per hour range. But other than that, it's been a really slow speed pursuit. Now we're in an alleyway. Again, we're in Duarte, so I always want to remind you, if you are here in this neighborhood, stay inside, uh, lock your doors, close your windows. Tim, we've been over pursuits together recently where the suspects bail and, you know, they're desperate. Inside your house, they don't care. They'll go inside your house to try and stay away from uh, authorities and being taken into custody. Now we're at this sort of intersection. It looks like he was deciding, should I turn left or right? We're sticking with, uh, you know, Field Drive and Maynard Drive, again, in the Duarte area. CHP, the agency on this, this started with uh, Monterey Park Police. CHP picked it up. We've gone through um, some freeways, but for the most part, it's been on surface streets. At one point, that was interesting. Another moment that was interesting was when it looked like there was it may have been the City of Hope uh, parking structure where uh, the suspect went in, but was able to come out. We thought that might be the end of it. Certainly not the end of it. We've been on the air minutes, um, if not more. I'm trying to do the math on the fly, Tim. Uh, <laughs> um, now, now the suspect, the suspect has his hand out the window again, gesturing. We've seen this multiple times. Yeah, and, and more than likely, they're yelling at him over the uh, PA system to stop the car, to get out. They may be even using his name if they have that information and doing whatever they can to make, make a connection with that driver to get him to stop. But, uh, you know, going to these areas, prime area for the uh, officers to put out a spike. In fact, the officer there may just ran out and threw out and found one, and then he turned around. I don't know if they got him or not. But uh, going through that parking lot, they're just cutting the corner. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. And it I looked like there was another the uh, spike strip attempt to cut you off, but it looked like there was another yeah. spike strip that was laid out. Right. And that coming out that way, or that was the way to come out. And I just saw the one CHP officer in the in the dark uh, kind of standing on the side. So you saw the driver make that little turn through that parking lot. So hopefully they had another one there. And that's a way they're going to get this thing to come to an end is to take out his tires to where the car just doesn't operate anymore. But every time they do that, you see he picks up speed just a little bit, even though it's only up into the 40s. That's, you know, you know three times faster than he has been going. So uh, we'll see what happens here, see if they had a successful spike or not. I'm sure the desk is listening to the uh, Pursuit Channel to listen to see if they see if they had a uh, successful pit or successful spike strip. So hmm. if that has happened, then those uh, 
needles will go into the tires, slowly let the air out, and uh, eventually as he drives along, the friction on the ground will start causing those tires to come apart and make the car uh, uh, unable to maneuver in the way to drive uh, from the engine to where he can't move along. But right now it looks like he's doing just fine, uh, working his way along uh, uh, looks like foothill here on coming up to the intersection to make the turn. So. Uh, we'll have to just wait and see how this thing's going to end because it looks like they're not in any hurry to stop it. Yeah, so we want to let our viewers know we're now in Irwindale. Uh, and uh, I, I do need to ask you, though, this. What is the difference between you about why they potentially aren't bringing this to an end with the pit maneuver because of than we do? This mm -hmm. person could be susceptible to self-harm. Uh, looks like they're getting a little closer. As we're zooming out, um, what's the difference between a pit maneuver and spike strips? I mean, is to bring this to an end. So why wouldn't they self-harm on spike strips versus a pit maneuver? Well, it's just the way the, the trap entrapment feels to where if you just hit the tires, he slowly starts slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. You don't have the agitation at the end. They've got to stop him. The spike strips are the most gentle way to stop him. Hmm. And I've had two pursuits where uh, we've done a pipe. A, pit maneuver and the suspect ends up stabbing themselves sitting oh. there as they're trying to take him out of the car stabbing uh themselves in the chest and in the stomach and things of that sort one who was down in oceanside that started in huntington beach and another one in huntington beach was uh right on beach boulevard i mean it, it, people do the weirdest things on the end of these pursuits and so you have to take that into account and obviously they have a intel that's telling them Something in that car is, is to where they're, they don't want to agitate this person. And as they do the spike strips, that just slowly slows the car down. He has a little bit of hope of getting away, and finally the car just stops. But now we're picking up some good speed here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll have to hopefully we'll start seeing some deterioration of the tires. Interesting. Okay, yeah. So, um, yes, we are uh, about 50 miles per hour. This is the fastest we've seen it go in some time. So this is a uh, four-door Dan. Um, I'm not sure if we know the make and the model. Um, I'm sure uh, my executive producer and producer will let me know. It's a black Nissan. I should have known that. Pardon me. So it's a black <laughs> Nissan four-door, uh, older model. Um, thank you, Haley. Thank you, Alan. And uh, CHP there, you know, I, I just... Uh, like everybody else who's watching this, we, we just want to know. Now the flashers are on, by the way, of the mm -hmm. Nissan. So this is the first time we've seen those flashers on, if I'm not mistaken. We're on North Todd Avenue and 10th Street, East San Gabriel Valley. Uh, what I'm getting at is, you know, what, what, could pos what, what are some of the scenarios, Tim, um, that they would know that they simply that this person could self-harm? Well, the, the, the scenario, I mean, like, to where, like I said, that aggressive maneuver is spinning something out. Okay, hands out, in. hands out, and okay. the uh, the flashers are on, the emergency lights are on. Confirmed that the spike strip was uh, successful or not, but there's some reason he turned on his blinkers or his uh, emergency lights. But uh, it's just a matter of, you know, of if he's going to harm himself. You know, there's not really a lot you can do other than using less lethal or some type of taser up close to be able to just immobilize him. He can't hurt himself. But what I was trying to say, the difference between a pit mm. and the uh, spike strips is it's less, not as violent as a, as a pit maneuver, and you're not trapped, not being trapped in and unable to escape here. He just comes to an end. But uh, at the end of this, it, you turn into, it's more likely going to turn into a negotiations type thing where you're going to be talking to an irrational person who's not going to listen to, uh, not going to do what you ask. And it's just a matter of trying to make that connection with the driver to get them to understand that what they're doing is not going to be successful and to give up hope of uh, getting away. And if they end up harming themselves with the car, that that does happen, and there's a lot of things to, do to prevent it. But you don't want to do anything that may cause it to happen or be able to be viewed in a, a post-investigation uh, of this pursuit that your actions caused the person to do this because we know in our, our uh, situation to where litigation is always the thing that comes up after something like this, that an officer has to be able to show justification for actions that they take during a pursuit. And at this point, 
you know, there's mm-hmm. no reason to uh, get up there and be very aggressive because, like I said earlier, if, you know, if it's not his call, property crime. Mm. And if, if he's under the influence, he's not endangering anybody. So there's no real exigent circumstance to get up there and do something aggressive. Now, try to take the tires out and mobilize the car would be the move I would look for right now. Okay, so let's update the location, North Vernon Avenue and West Industrial Boulevard. That just quickly switched over to West Foothill Boulevard. There's a, uh, in the city of Azusa, uh, here we are, stop, stop uh, light here, intersection. We've seen this play out over and over. Looks like he's going to make a right turn. Um, When he goes from city to city, I know there's coordination with the local law enforcement for is Azusa PD now strategizing as well, or is it strictly CHP resources that we're seeing? Well, what you're seeing is CHP is uh, in charge of the pursuit and handling the pursuit. The surrounding uh, Picking up aware speed. Of where it's at, yeah, of where it is and what it, what's going on, and they're staying in the background like they had that one officer parked in behind a Target store waiting there to see if it end in that area. But the perimeter, you're in the area to lend help when it comes to an end. But as per CHP policy, they do not allow outside agencies hmm. to get into their pursuit. If okay. the outside agency does become involved, they will back out. So they're going to keep this until they decide that he's you know in an area to where local agency, now on the wrong side of the road, turning across and going into a driveway maybe. Yep, going into another, looks like looks like a parking structure right there on the right. Maybe another business park, strip mall, hard to tell. So we're in a business park. We've seen this over and over. Mm-hmm. And to your point, and this is the city of Azusa, and to your point that he certainly knows the area. He knows the ins and outs of all of these shopping centers or business parks. Speed's picking up into the 40s and 50s. It got up to about 65 just a few minutes ago. Uh, and here we go again into the 60s. So this is this is pretty rare. I mean, it's been a very, very... It looks like the window is down. Uh, this this uh, suspect wearing a black hat. I couldn't make out what the hat said earlier. Not that that is necessarily relevant, but just trying to paint the picture as best as I can. We are now back in Irwindale, North Irwindale Avenue and East Foothill Boulevard in Irwindale. And we're uh, seeing a few more people out and about. Again, if you're out on uh, coming home perhaps late night, let them know that uh, there is this pursuit that is underway. CHP is the lead agency. And are we getting onto a freeway? Is this an on ramp? It kind of looks like it. We are, we are getting onto the 210 West. Okay, on a freeway in some time, Tim. Yeah, yeah, 605 was the last one he was on. Now, uh, to the west here to see how far he goes. And then, you know, if he picks up speed, you know, what is his driving ability going to be? But uh, before, we didn't stay on the freeway very long, and he just may go to the next ramp and pop off. But uh, like I said, the CHP are going to maintain their profile with the information they have, and as they've been doing now for, you know, almost 45 minutes, but if he starts getting aggressive in his driving, they will they will go up and be a little more aggressive on their own. So uh, right now, it looks like we're just going to stay in that right far right lane and uh, continue. Yeah. Okay, so 60 plus miles per hour, which is, uh, you know, speed limit uh, ish. And I just changed out some equipment here. Forgive me. Uh, so here we are, um, East San Gabriel Valley. I want to bring our viewers that this has been, by and large, a slow speed pursuit. So this is the fastest it's been going, uh, really. And we picked it up at 1025. Monterey Park, possible DUI suspect. With that said, it hasn't really been erratic driving in terms of weaving, uh, necessarily losing control because it has been such a slow speed pursuit. CHP, the lead agency on it, it was picked up by Monterey Park. Tim, I from you tonight though if if in all my years of covering uh pursuits as we transition to the 605 i didn't realize that if chp is the lead agency they don't want any other enforcement agency to intervene yes that's been a policy of theirs for quite a while hmm. 
uh, yeah, they will not, if they come up and take charge of the, or you ask them to take charge of the pursuit and you do not back out, they will, they will back out and let it go because they, like I said, they have their policy that they don't intermingle with the local law enforcement, not even, not even with a canine involved or the elite or the agency that started the pursuit. They want them completely out and let them handle the pursuit. And then, uh, should it gets into an area to where, uh, take it back because it's in their service streets, then they'll request CHP to back out and then they'll take charge. But normally what the local agencies will do is just let CHP chase them because there's a statewide agency. They have more resources and the better ability to chase for further distances to where you don't want to be from Monterey Park and end up, you know, over in uh, Van Nuys absolutely have no idea where you're doing mm -hmm. so or where you're going so uh they'll let chp handle it all the way through and just pick up the pieces after it's over but you know just watching this guy drive he's just you know like said we say freeway speeds but actually at this time Jim, he's going really slow right for most of the folks yeah. up there but the chp is going to throw a traffic brake behind him to keep anybody from you know racing by or just pulling on by because of the speeds being slower than a normal flow it looks like we're getting off the freeway here at Arrow Highway and uh, in that North San Gabriel area. Uh, it's pretty clear that this suspect knows the area really well. As we're wrapped around here to the off ramp, uh, innocent driver here clearly doesn't realize what is coming up behind him or her. We're going to make a left. Yep, and yep. we are on to Arrow Highway. Uh, the the thing that struck me once we were on to the freeway there is just seemingly how many opportunities there were to stop this when it was a slow speed pursuit when no one's around, uh, and mm -hmm. I understand all of what you're saying about the the pit and versus the spike strip to bring this to an end, but it gets a little bit more um, intense once it's on the freeway and there are other drivers coming home in. Know, LA County area on the six on the 605 on the 210 and so it seems more of a public nuisance once it gets on to those freeways yes and you know like I said if he keeps the speeds down he has been they're more likely just going straight following but we had that pursuit a couple weeks ago with on the 405 where the man was at a high rate of speed and tried to make a little lane change between a couple cars lost control hit the right shoulder then completed completely across the freeway and hit the center divider. Uh, so that's what they're going to try to avoid happening here. And like I said, if he continues here at 30 miles an hour and, and just stops for lights and doesn't really run through red lights and get in ways of other people, they're, it looks like they're just they are content with following and waiting to see what happens. So uh, like I said, they, they've got the information that we don't. And so and just as long as they've been following this person, there's more to this than then we've been uh, we the information that we've gotten. So uh, we just have to trust the uh, CHP mm -hmm. to do what they mm -hmm. do the best and uh, follow their training, follow the uh, commands of their uh, command staff in the station, and uh, stick with it until it comes to an end. Yeah, we're seeing that night sun on the here. So this is River Grade Road and Stewart Avenue. Tim, can you speak to how CHP versus local agencies may differ in policy? Uh, they're all they, there is a uniform policy for the state of California as far as how you handle them and what you do as a as a as a foundation each department has a different set of rules for their pursuit such as the department I worked for Huntington Beach Police Department every unit was equipped with spike strips was in the street was pit qualified and very few pursuits got out of Huntington Beach because the first opportunity you didn't have to ask for permission. If you had the three units in the pursuit, you were able to take them out. You have other agencies that do not pit. They have no pit training, and they won't do it. They'll just chase. And then other units, uh, I've had departments that I've, I've watched, they just do straight-out tactical rams where a guy is this slow. He will just come along mm -hmm. and stick their police car right into the driver door and push him right into the curb. So. It goes from different agencies uh, as far as policy procedures and things of that sort uh, as the way they handle things. Now, uh, it, it, you know, like I said, but there's not a boilerplate with this is exactly how it happens. There is a foundation to it, but each agency can do 
different things a little bit differently than the other. And I've even seen CSs from you know the different offices that we pass through have different methods and means of doing things. And that's all based on what their freeway looks like. You get out into the desert area, the desert CHP is going to act a lot different than the central uh, downtown LA CHP because they're in a different environment. So uh, they have a lot more opportunities to do things. And at this case, I'm surprised that they haven't tried repeated efforts to spike strip keep them uh, to try to take out the tires and slow them down to where uh, it just takes away the mobility of the car. Um, it looks like our extreme <clears throat> nav in the Skyfox uh, was uh, a little out of there. It said speeds into the hundreds, so obviously that's not the case. No. Uh, but we're in the 40s here. Uh, so noting the time, it's 1128. Uh, we have been on the air with this for just over an hour, just over 60 minutes. For the uh, viewers who may be watching Fox 11 Plus, Channel 13, we want to let you know that once the clock strikes 1130, we will end our pursuit coverage, but we will continue it here live on Fox 11. So if you happen to be watching on 11 Plus and you'd like to stick with this coverage, please at 1130, turn over to Channel 11 where we will continue with this coverage Tim, I hope you didn't have significant plans on this Friday night. Clearly you didn't because you're spending it with us here at Fox 11, which I feel like I'm a pursuit magnet. We have been doing this uh, well into the night uh, a few times of late. So uh, we appreciate you here at Fox 11. And, uh, oh, it looks like CHP lined up on the side of this particular in intersection. This is Arrow Highway and Avenida Barbosa. And those officers are out. That's interesting. What What do you make of this? That's local uh, officers there. That is not CHP, that right. Okay. Yeah, that's local officers there. I so see. They were just where this thing goes. And when they stopped, they were taking a position of cover behind their car because they didn't know what we what the intent of this person. You can always come down from a level of Tim. threat. Then. Tim, let me just interrupt you quickly because I want to say a proper good night to the folks watching on Fox 11 Plus. We appreciate you watching. If you'd like to continue with the pursuit coverage, please turn it over to Channel 11. Thank you so much and have a good night. And if you are sticking with us on Good Night LA Channel 11, our coverage is extending. Uh, right now, we are watching this pursuit of a possible DUI suspect. This is Arrow Highway and Avenida Barbosa. I believe we're still in Irwindale. If I'm not, uh, let me know if, I, if that's, that is correct. So we're still in the Irwindale. CHP now the lead op, uh, agency on this and speeds in the 30s. We have Tim Lynn, a police specialist on the line. You've had plenty of years experience. Your insight is incredible. Uh, we've learned a lot from you tonight as to why in the world, you know, authorities are just letting this go on because it's been going on for well over an hour at this point. We've seen a couple of spike attempts. It looks like that was oh, sort of a side swipe slash pit there, but no, no go on that. Oh, clearly now that agitated the driver because speeds are now into the 60s as we're now getting back on to uh, this would be the 605, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, 605 right. North here. <clears throat> uh, and now it looks like CHP may be getting a little bit more aggressive. Uh, what I saw there is somebody was getting frustrated and mm -hmm. had the shot and wanted to take it in the worst way, but knew he couldn't. So this going back into my police and having sat there behind that wheel and been in that situation where you wanted to take it, but you know, you don't have authorization to do it. So uh, that clearly tells me now that they've gone into a wait and see attitude here and looking down at the the light coming on a little bit we see if we got any problems with tires but they would have gone they would have gone flat by now or and started smoking with as much uh if that spike strip earlier had to happen but yeah they uh that kind of just confirms my uh, earlier guess that you know they're they know what's going on in that car they have information about the driver and they're not going to do anything really aggressive to take them out so uh, unless he does something more aggressive himself. But it, well, yeah, here we're at 51 miles an hour on the 605 freeway here heading up north. But we, we followed the 605 freeway last time, and we got off in uh, the north end and pulled onto Arrow Highway. And so we'll see if he ends up doing the same thing here again. So it's certainly mainly the same area. 
but CHP, you know, like I said, it's the hardest thing to, to do is to keep your uh, emotions in check while you're trying to uh, follow the suspect and not aggressive with him because that's what the plan is. It looks like we're coming up to the interchange here to see if we're going to mm. make the change over to the uh, 210 freeway here. Yeah, this that's is what we're coming up on. This is the fastest it's, it's gone in some time. We were hitting 75 yeah. miles per hour, uh, which is, you know, pretty uh, normal speed for but nonetheless, given how slow this has been for the last hour, seems like race car speeds uh, <laughs> uh, at this point. Uh, so this is a this is an older model Nissan Black, as you can see, uh, sedan, four door. You see the big rig coming up. So this is the most traffic we've really seen. Uh, 210 eastbound now. CHP coming up behind. Of course, the flashing lights that hasn't really resulted in anything as of yet. Throughout this pursuit, we've seen the driver uh, taunt. We've seen the driver, you know, hands out, even the head out of, of the uh, window there, basically saying what, what. I've seen that a few times. Uh, and then also the stop and go as if, okay, maybe have a little conversation with officers and then hit the gas pedal again. And we've been on our way. We've seen a lot of out of parking lots, parking structures even. And that's where we've seen a lot of over the years come to an end. Suspect goes into a multi-level parking structure that can usually, that has not happened. Now it looks like we're getting off here. Avenue exit uh, from the 210 East. So we've been sort of going round and round. Tim has noted, and, and Tim, again, thank you for sticking with our coverage. You've noted that this person clearly knows the, um, that authorities must know a lot more. Well, of course they do. Why they're not being more aggressive. Yeah, exactly. And just, you know, watching their manner, their, their method of driving and the way they've just been following with their multiple chances to do a pit maneuver, uh, especially on that U-turn there. We saw that was the perfect time to take him around, and they didn't take that at, at that point. They've attempted a few spike strips along the way, uh, and every time they do that, the driving gets a little bit faster. And right now it's uh, in its normal mode here, driving slow. They're following and like I said, the whole time there's people back in the station back build as much intel they can on that driver. And then, you know, like I said, they could very easily be talking to him on the phone and telling him to stop, you know, pull over, you know, give yourself up. It's okay. Nothing's going to happen. You're not going to be harmed. Or he could be on the phone with a family member. Yeah, but that, and the, that he's, he's shaking his hands and doing the mm -hmm. praying motion and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. You know, that just shows somebody who's not in control going on right now. And they're they're talking to the officers. Now, it looks like we're going on the wrong side of the street here for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, talking to the officers and trying to convince them to stop chasing them and, and not having the mental faculties to know that that's not going to happen. So we're just going to take this a little run through these neighborhoods here and go down these alleys and go through parking lots. And eventually, he's going to either come off of whatever he's on the alcohol is going to wear off he's going to start realizing that there's he's not they're not going away and the best thing he can do is get out of the car now and start arguing with them if that's what's going to happen or pull into a driveway is this uh, a parking lot so we've had a tour that pulled yep. up the yeah, another parking lot here and uh down an alley so like he obviously knows the area because he's done these really small alleys a few times yeah and uh Knowing that there's an exit on the other end, you know, that's that's the biggest hope for the officers is that he'll go down a dead end. But uh, he's ever gone. It doesn't look like he's going to do that because he knows where he's at because he's taking roads that are just very small, just almost like service roads of that side where he went down that one part where it turns to dirt and then popped back out onto. So, yeah, it's just a matter of time. You see, there's another. You can see blocking the street right there, letting him go through. Uh, and most of the time, the local agents like that will not throw a spike strip because they're not in communications with CHP. They're going through a, a patch system to where CHP is talking. Their dispatch is hearing it and relaying the information because most agencies in the Los Angeles County area cannot talk directly to each other. Mm -hmm. Systems are set up the way the departments came into existence.
since over the years, you know, many, many, many years ago. Uh, they don't have a, a, a central frequency that they can all speak on, uh, such as in Orange County. Every police car in Orange County, no matter what city they work for, can talk to each other. There's one central pursuit frequency that everybody hears. And so everybody in Orange County, when a pursuit starts, can hear the pursuit. And then if the situation happens, they can talk directly to the officers in the pursuit or uh, talk directly to the agency that's in pursuit. It's just the way the system is set up in Orange County. Unfortunately, L.A. County is not set up that way. And right now, it's just a matter of just staying, staying with this uh, pursuit, staying with the suspect, keeping an eye on him, and hoping that he'll uh, come, to a, uh, come to a stop here sooner than later. We are on now. While you were speaking, the 210 eastbound, just passing the Vernon Avenue exit. Uh, we've seen the on and off a bit, so it wouldn't surprise me if he takes an exit uh, sooner than later, as we're now uh, a little far so we don't necessarily have eyes on that black Nissan. There we go. We see the flashing lights slowing down, but okay, so there's one, two, three, four. At one point, I counted five black and whites, and surely there's more. Uh, but down below, right there uh, on the right lanes, there it is. I see it again. So the uh, looks like, as mentioned, taking the exit, Vernon Avenue. So we're doing these loops. Uh, suspects clearly familiar with this particular area. Um, as, as you said, either the uh, alcohol, the drugs, whatever it may be, if this is in fact a DUI suspect, that will wear off at some point. Uh, then we, you know, we often talk about how much gas does the vehicle have. You know, that is a thought. Um, obviously, this has been going on for about an hour and 20 minutes on the air with it. This is North uh, Barbara Avenue, West 3rd Street. Uh, and Tim, you know, I'm thinking as a spectator watching this and alerting the public to let them know, um, you know, what sort of what we feel, but as an officer, and looks like CHP is getting close here, going into back onto the freeway. Back on the freeway. Yeah. The officer, is it, is it, uh, you, you tell me, what is the mindset? Well, right now, I can tell you that it, that officer is a human being, and I'm sure he's frustrated. I would be frustrated in that lead vehicle to the point. Uh, you know, now we're just following this guy. We're just kind of sticking with him, and we've had multiple opportunities to stop him. But they've been ordered or told, hey, this is what we're going to do, and you have to follow those orders. And we saw that U-turn where he, he saw that officer start to look like he was going to go for it. And I said, that's, you know, that's for me is just pure frustration. But that's where the professionalism comes into effect, where you follow the orders that, that you are given, and you do what you're told, and, and, and you know, follow you're doing here because uh like i said they have the information that we don't and if this guy starts cutting off people and getting in the way of big big rigs or doing anything of that sort crossing then, over yeah yeah he's just trying to get off the freeway and a big rig happened to slow down on him uh so <clears throat> they're gonna just stay with him and and not do the pit maneuver like i said we could have a situation here where he's threatened self-harm uh, should they do that? So hopefully they're just going to get him in a position. And luckily doing all these uh, roundabouts and staying in the same area is going to give the uh, departments or HP uh, the ability to run those spike strips. But hopefully that happens to where we can just disable the vehicle and take this weapon away from him, which is that vehicle. So uh, looks like... Oh, look at this. We haven't seen this really. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but just coming yeah. up behind this driver, um, presumably trying to turn left. It's interesting to me in terms of the driving behavior. Why not just go around and turn left? Uh, you know, uh, uh, why right. why obey at this point the, the the law of the land at this particular stop? Officer with the door open at this point. Mm -hmm. He's taking a position of, of cover to where in case that guy pops out of the car, he's able to get down behind that door and uh, you know, return fire if the guy starts firing. But this shows you the mental state. He's been running from the police. I mean, what's a uh, illegal lane change and a red light going to change anything? But mm -hmm. in his mind, he's just driving, and they're following me. And I don't know why they're following me, but I'm not going to stop. But, uh, yeah, it's just tactic that they're doing right here where they fan out and they get a position of advantage. And now that car is, you know, he's just trying to get home, the guy in front of him. 
and now the light's green and off we go and we'll see if he makes a u-turn here or just makes the yeah that shows you the mindset of the uh the suspect you know he's going to park you know drive normal and follow the rules of the road and do what he can so right now we're just going to watch her to see if there's anything out in front of him at this point but i don't don't see anything so uh, uh yeah. window is window being rolled. yeah yeah and so we'll, we'll see i mean there, there's there's not too much they can do it unless they get more aggressive on it yeah. uh they're not going to in harm's way by putting them in front of the suspect and possibly down range from any anything that may happen so uh you want to just you know stay behind him stay in a position of advantage on the suspect and react to what the suspect does because as i said at the beginning of the pursuit the man driving this car is in total control of this pursuit and he will determine how it ends east foothill boulevard and north irwindale avenue in uh, irwindale right now he's still uh, working this uh, slow speed pursuit i'm still going to call it a slow speed pursuit because by and large it has been that of a DUI suspect. We've seen on and off the 210 freeway in the recent moments here several times, eastbound, then westbound, taking the Vernon Avenue exit, the Irwindale Avenue exit. Now, in according to our uh, extreme nav technology, just uh, driving along the San Gabriel River, it looks really dark all of a sudden because those street lights are not there as we're crossing the river. Um, Tim, does this change anything for officers? It just gives them a lot of open area and opportunity. Oh, just to a do sudden stop. But, oh, look at yeah. the officer well, with the gun drawn. There. Oh, there's a bunch yeah. of spike. Are the spike strips right there? Yes. Uh, yep. Looks like he might have spike strips down. And yep. uh, oh, he's going to go around them. Uh, hopefully, somebody else can throw oh, one out gosh. on the other side. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, uh, they have to take both sides. <laughs> that would be my only suggestion from 30-plus years of law enforcement experience. If you're going to lay spike strips, spike the whole road at that situation. Cause, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're, yeah. you just you gave them an out there, and they they just need to be uh, a little more uh, aggressive on that. I mean, it, yeah, they should have spikes all the way across that bridge. But, you know, hindsight being 2020 now, they won't do that again. No. I guarantee you that. No, but they it looks won't. like we may have. Yeah, it's just this tree here. of all things skyfox over around yeah. you see a chp yeah. officers out two of them uh mm -hmm. oh gosh let's see let's see what's happening is he out nope okay i wonder what He's getting, what getting provoked him to just suddenly stop again we have for folks watching at home oh the spike officer driving around up. to put the spike strips very good underneath right. there you go so now yeah. if they're going to go going to drive is going to go right over those spikes right exactly exactly yeah uh, he may have <laughs> may have stopped to argue with them about ruining his tires for all you know at this point why wow. he didn't stop but a good move on that officer to, to get up there in harm's way toss those spike strips between the uh, tires so he can't go backwards you can't go forward He's pointing. He's pointing at the, yeah. at the spikes. Yeah, probably telling him to take the spikes out. <laughs> that's probably what he's asking. You know, demanding the spikes. So that's what the kind of a person you're dealing with here. You know, being irrational. Being, you know, mm -hmm. just not in the right mind. So yeah. it's, you can't go anywhere. Out there like that. Yeah. Well, that's where you throw him between the tires because he can't back Mark. up and he can't go forward. Yeah, go forward. I've I've never. Tim, I feel like, you know, we, we've covered so many of these of late, but there's always something new I see in these pursuits. I've not mm -hmm. seen this where literally the spike is thrown under. So no matter uh, forward or backward, this driver right. will puncture those tires. Um, you exactly. can see him motioning. He's very upset. Officers, guns drawn. It's a really tense situation. You know, we don't know, Tim. Oh, he's showing his hands. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Is he saying I can't open my door? Who knows? I mean, it could be, it could be that, but there shouldn't be any problem with him not oh, opening that. Oh, yeah, uh, you that's, see, that's, uh, yep. it's more like that's more than likely a less lethal round to shatter right. the window, and the next thing will go pepper balls, where they'll start putting uh, to uh, make him uh, encourage him to get out to class first, 
with uh, either a, a shotgun round of less lethal or a 40 millimeter uh, rubber bullet. But yeah, they'll take that window out and then they'll start putting pepper balls through that hole. But more likely you'll see another uh, less lethal round go in to knock out the rest of that window. So they with the, with the pepper balls or with the uh, the gas agent, whatever they're using to encourage him to get out of the car. So uh, right now they're, all right, you know, we've knocked your window out. It's your time to give up. I'm sticking my hands up. up. And so this conversation now is going back and forth between the suspect and the officers. And what they want him to do now is open that door and get out and give up. And that round through that back window is a little bit of encouragement to him to show that they are not, you know, putting up with much more. And uh, you'll start seeing a pepper balls zip in there in a minute if, if he doesn't comply pretty quickly. Yeah, um, I think w was that in fact I, I want to use the right. Oh, another another, another less less than lethal round. Is that officially a bean bag, Tim? Yeah, a bean bag. Okay, so it's a bean yeah, bag, and so he comes out of a twelve gauge shotgun and yep. goes through that window pretty easily. It's one ounce of of pellets inside of a Kevlar yeah. bag. He's getting scared. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. I'm sure it's. Or if, if he's not hit by the bean bag itself, and now they have. Opening door from the outside. They've given him the proper encouragement to give up. And now the officers are going to have tasers. They're going to have bean bags and then also uh, chemical uh, to be able to take him down if he doesn't give up, uh, doesn't do the right thing. He's but yelling, they, uh, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, sure they, hands up. He's showing, he's saying, hey, my hands are up, stop. So, you know, at. He, he should step out of the vehicle. Right. Yeah. And and there and he goes. Like you said. There he goes. Yeah. So he step. He's going to step he out. Does anything. Yeah. Well, if he does anything other than get out of the car, he's just you know there a little bit. So. Yeah. So. And see what they've been dealing with for the last hour, fifteen yep. minutes. Yeah, it's been uh, about an hour and a half. So he's going to step over the spike strips. He's got to have the back to him. Okay, so now at this point, he seems to be doing what officers want him to do on the ground. Very good. Spread. Officers will approach. They'll check the vehicle. It looks like he's been there before, but his back like that he kind of knows what's going on what the program is so yeah they'll make that make you see sure the uh, the laser clear. you see the laser yeah yep and uh that's probably a patrol rifle and they'll work their way oh, up gosh. on him but the problem is he, he's not clear yet he's got his hands by the back of his waistband so you don't know if he has a weapon back there or not but fortunately uh they were able to get there subdue his hands and now it looks like it's going to be a good four no wow. civilians hurt and suspect in Okay, uh, well, uh, the suspect is in custody. It's 11.50. We're 20 minutes uh, beyond Good Night LA. Tim Lynn, I want to thank you so much. Uh, I want to, though, let our viewers know this is ending in the city of Irwindale. Uh, I don't have the exact location, but you can follow up tomorrow uh, and on our website, foxla.com. Tim Lynn, appreciate you so much. Couldn't have done it without you. Thank you so much. It's good to have that this suspect is now officially in custody. Thank you, Tim.